or will you come out burnt up? Will you become better? I'm going to be in 1 Chronicles chapter 28, <clears throat> 29, sorry, 1 Chronicles 29. You can listen along as I read. It's weird how the Lord works everything out, uh, and, and he, he has it all figured out. Um, the message that it was just in my own Bible reading, something I hadn't caught before, and just really, uh, I've read the passage, I know, 50 times, but I just never caught it. And uh, But it ended up being on a day when we had all these things fall, and I didn't know everything was going to fall today. I, I just stuff comes, and when you have to do stuff on the day, you have to do it, you know? And today, uh, everything fell with the Philippines and with camp and everything else. It was just that day. Uh, it just happened to be it all fell the same day. But um, I want to talk about give willingly. Give willingly. And, uh, and uh, so I'm going to be in First Chronicles chapter 29 and verses 1, <clears throat> 1 through 6. I'm going to start there, and then I will uh, uh, read uh, verse 9 after that. It says, Furthermore, David being king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord uh, God. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God, the gold for, uh, for things to be made of gold, and the silver for things, for things made of silver, and brass for things of brass. The iron for things of iron, and the wood for things of wood, onyx stones and stones to be set, glittering stones and of diverse colors, and all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have, uh, <clears throat> I have of mine own uh, proper good uh, of uh, gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, even three thousand talents of gold, of the gold of Ulf, of the gold of Ulfer, uh, and seven thousand talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls uh, of the houses withal, the gold uh, for things of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and for all manner of work to be made in the, by the hands of the artificers who, um, and and uh, and who there is willing. And this is uh, the question at the end. And who there is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? So David just goes in and says, I've given all this stuff and of my own stuff. And I want you to, I want to know who wants to give to the Lord. And I want to talk about that a little bit in, uh, in this passage and give willingly. Let's pray. We'll talk about it. Father, thank you for the chance to teach and preach. The word is wonderful, Lord, and it's so rich. And you taught us how to give. You gave your son. We pray today that you'd speak to our hearts. Thank you for the good service you've had. Thank you for the generosity of the people of God and all the blessings, the opportunities we have to help people, Lord. It's so, so wonderful. We give you all the glory. Bless everyone who's here today for taking time to come into your house. Speak to their hearts. Thank you for the comforts we have. We have air conditioning. We have comfortable chairs. We have the word of God. We have uh, uh, health enough to get to church, Lord. Uh, transportation. We thank you for all the blessings you've given to us we can forget about sometimes. We thank you for loving us and being patient with us. I pray today that you would speak to us because we need to hear from you. We need truth. We need wisdom. We need guidance. Uh, we need to know how to serve you better. And I pray you'd help us with these things in Jesus' name. Amen. One thing I try to teach oftentimes to men um, uh, it is, and more so, but also for women, is how to how to be nice, how to serve, how to do things for your spouse, how to um, how to be a blessing to somebody, because you can do the service, you can try to be a blessing to them, and do it wrongly. So when it comes time to for Valentine's Day, and you forgot about it because you're a man. And she suddenly reminds you and says, you know, the other day I was talking to uh, Mary and she went and talked about what she was going to do for Valentine's Day. Hint, hint, hint. And she uh, kind of hints it to you. And then you kind of say, oh, yeah, that's right. What do I got to buy you? The way you approach things makes a big difference to people. 
If I said to my family, okay, I have to pay the bills for you guys. You know, there's no love expressed there. And there's, just, there's, no, there's no service. It's duty. If, if a wife says, here's your food. I have to cook for you, I guess. Okay. A man will eat the food, but because he's a man, and you know. But to the woman who reject the gift, men are, you know. But uh, the woman might say, you can have your, your flowers if you don't want to give them to me. Men will, men will say, I'll eat the food, but I'm not happy. And, uh, <clears throat> but but, but the, it makes a difference, your attitude. It's important that we get that. And, and there's a word in here, and just watch the joy they had in verse 9. It says, and the people rejoiced for that they offered willingly because with a perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Notice how everybody's happy, rejoicing. The Bible says Jesus said it's more blessed to give than receive. There's a joy in giving. But there's a word in here in this chapter, and I never caught it before. I, I don't know why I haven't caught it before. It's all over this chapter. It's a Bible principle. It's the end of the verses, but it really caught my attention in this chapter. And it's the word willingly. Willingly. And, and, and that word just makes all the difference. Willingly. I, I've never wanted someone to be forced to serve God. It doesn't make me happy. It doesn't, it doesn't bring any joy. Matter of fact, I usually reject, if I can, that service. They say, oh, I have to make the coffee today for church. Everybody else is so stinking lazy, and i got to do it. I, I just kind of like, hey, you know, don't worry about it. It's, it's not that big a deal. We'll get it. I, I don't want people to serve God with that grudginess that I have to. When you, when you get to, and, and anything in life, I want you to understand, you can, the devil has a way of twisting anything in life into a horrible duty. Spending time with your kids can seem like a great burden if you let your mind get warped enough. Ugh, kids are brats, why don't they spend time? You got a precious gift there, a child. You got a spouse, someone who puts up with you. And, uh, and, uh, and, and you should really, the way your attitude is, is huge. And the way you serve God says not only to God, either I love you or uh, you're a burden to me, but it also says everybody watching whether you really like God or not. Whether it's a duty and a burden and a responsibility or whether it's like, hey, I love to serve God. God gave me everything I have. And they see you serving with joy. And, and, and they see you with, the, with rejoicing in, in the service of God. They, 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 it's different. Because a lot of Christians are walking around miserable. And talking about, oh, it's so hard. And other Christians are going around rejoicing. They get to serve the Lord. They, they, they get opportunities to show the Lord they love him. And it's a privilege. And it makes a big difference. Watch the word willingly. In this, in this chapter, uh, 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 first, uh, chapter 29 here in verse, it's going to say it, it just so many times, verse 5. He says here, he says, he says the end of the verse, he says, who is willing to consecrate his service under the house of God this day? He says, who's willing to do this thing? And, and, and he, says, he says in verse uh, 6, uh, then the chief of the fathers and the princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds and the rulers of the, of the king's work offered willingly. Verse 9, then the people rejoiced that they, uh, that, for that they offered willingly because the perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. Man, keeps on saying it. Verse 14, but who am I, David says in praying to God, and what is my people that we should be able to offer willingly after this sort? The attitude's amazing. Verse 17, I know also, my God, that thou triest, uh, that thou, uh, <clears throat> thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly, willingly offered all these things. Boy, he's saying that a lot, isn't he? Willingly. Willingly. He, wants, he says we get to do that. 
See, here's the situation is, is Solomon, David is king still, but he's old. Solomon, his son, is going to take over. David wanted to build God's house, the temple. And Solomon, and God said to David, no, you're not the man to do it. Your son is going to do it. And David said, okay, I'll prepare everything for my son so he can have this great start. And he can have this stuff ready. And so David started preparing and got the iron and got the wood and got the jewels and got the gold and got the silver. So Solomon can kind of walk into an easy situation. And I want to say, every good parent should leave his children an easier path than they had. A lot of parents who, who grew up with hurt and wounds, they hand the same thing to their kids. Give your kid a better start than you. And, 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 and in every way, make it easier for them. Because if you made it through all of your struggles, like I made it through all my struggles, look, I don't want my kids to have to go through all those. I want them to go through struggles because struggles are good for you. But I don't want to have to go through the, the horrid struggles that I went through as a child. And, and, and I want to give them a better start in life. And, and, and David said, I want Solomon to have this. Then he went to people and said, hey, I've given my own stuff willingly. I, I gave my own stuff. Look, you understand? So David didn't have to give his own stuff. But he gave his own things. And then he went to the leaders and he said, guys, I gave my stuff. Who wants to give his stuff willingly? We're not going to make you do it. But who wants to give their stuff? Because we're going to build this beautiful house for God, the temple of God. Who wants to do that? And people said, I want to, I want to. And the people offered themselves willingly and they raised the stuff. And all of a sudden they're standing there rejoicing saying, that was fun. And of course, they built a beautiful temple eventually, and they did this. It was not just a worldly thing that they were building. It was for God. Look at verse 1. Um, it, he says, furthermore, uh, uh, David the king uh, said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom God alone hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. I hope when you just, we just raised that stuff right there. You did that for the Lord. You can do stuff so somebody say, aren't you amazing? Or boy, you're wonderful. Or so somebody could pat you in the back. But really, you should do it because it's the cause of Christ. It's people. It's souls. It's you love people. You love the Lord. And, and you do those things. And David said, this thing is for God. It's not for man. David made it a personal thing for him. In verse 3, it says, More because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have of mine own proper good of the gold and silver. The way that phrase there is kind of strange in English, but what it means is I gave my own stuff. Why does that matter? Because understand, David could have taxed the people and given the money, or he could have just taken it from the storehouses of Israel's treasures. But he didn't either. David said, I didn't take this out of the treasure of Israel, because he had that. I didn't tax you all and make you pay for this thing. He said, I took my own money, my own gold, my own silver, my own jewels, and I personally gave them to God. Because this is personally because I love God. And I love his house, so I am doing this of my own stuff. It's not a real sacrifice to give something to somebody else's. Just ask politicians. <laughs> They're really good at it. They're very generous with the, somebody else's money. And, 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 but he said, uh, by the way, you would find that uh, if the politicians had to support people with their own money, there'd be a lot more accountability for who they gave their money to. Because it's not their money. But David said, I'm giving my money. And my money is going to this thing. And the people said, I want to give my money too because it's the house of God. And they rejoiced. And they were happy about it because they gave in personal giving. I just want to give you some thoughts on giving willingly. And it's not going to be all about money at all. It's about the, the attitude and it's about giving is in general. Number one, it is not just what you give, but how you give. They gave willingly. They gave willingly. They gave willingly. They offered willingly. It said, I think, seven times in this passage. Amen. Willingly. David didn't force them. And by the way, I, I've never shamed you into anything. Never. We put up, this is the people, this is the thing, this is the deal, this is what we're doing. Here's the camp, and 
What if we didn't give? Okay. <laughs> it's okay. The Lord will provide somehow. We're not worried about it. You got a chance to give. I got a chance to give. I love giving to these things. I love to know some, some kid who's working hard, who's, who goes home every day and sleeps on a wood floor and, uh, and, and, is, and, and you know, has his stomach upset from bad water and all, all the stuff he's living with. He's going to college every day. And he's going to have a better life. I love that. And his kids will grow up better. And her kids will grow up better. And, and they'll be able to help people. And all those things. I love that. It, it's a joy to give. But it's all got to be from the heart. Not because somebody's forcing you. I don't know who gives, except for when you do something like that. And I forget 10 seconds later. I don't check. I don't count the offerings. I have anything, anything to do with it. I, it's your deal, you and God. And, and I want you to willingly want to serve the Lord. It, for, let me take it a, a key verse, and I almost made it a memory verse, but it's, I'm going to read you, I'm going to read you a, a 2 Corinthians 9, 7. And, uh, and you don't need to turn there, but let me read you this verse. Just listen as I read this. It says, Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Let me read that again, because God cares about the attitude. God does not need your money. <laughs> but your heart he needs. Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly, or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. The attitude matters. See, God should be number one in your life. That's the principle. The Bible says this in Proverbs 3, 9, Honor the Lord with the first fruits of all thine increase. He said later in Proverbs, the tithe is the Lord. So the tithe is a weird thing. It says, honor the Lord with the first fruits of all thine increase. When it says first fruits, God does that very purposefully, and he keeps it consistently all throughout the Bible. It's the same thing as Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So when I, if, you, if you go, God doesn't say, if you have it, give. That's not what God says. It's not the Bible principle. God says the first tithe, it's, the word is tithe means tenth. The first tenth is mine. God does not say, I hope you give it to me. He said, it is mine. I require it. It's mine. He says, but he says, I want to get the first fruit, the first tithe. What's that mean? You get $200, God gets the first 20. Not you pay all your bills and you do all the things you want to do and you buy your Starbucks and then if you have any money left over, you give it to God. That is not putting God first. What the tithe does, it resets your priorities. And I, I lived for over 20 years straight. And you understand God is a good God and he can provide for you. I lived... Uh, <clears throat> Out of my first 23 years of marriage, I was tw 20 of those years, I did not make enough money to pay my bills. Okay? And I'm good with money and budgeting and no numbers and paid attention. And I'm not talking buying nice things, car payments, no car payments at all. Uh, at the whole time, um, I, could not, I did not make enough. But every single month, every single week, God got the first. You say, how'd you live, God. <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom of God and, all, and, and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. God took care of me. Trust me, I'm not starving. Okay? Um, I'm, I, 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 can, I can handle a little famine and, and still have a little, little, little bit of room um, to starve. And, uh, and Because God is good. And you put God first, not last. It's not a matter of God's got to have something. It's God says, I want you to put, and because money is very important to people, I want you to make sure I'm first in that area of your life, just like every area. And so I, I, I want you to do that, but I want you to do it willingly. And so if, if you get a paycheck, the first tenth goes to the Lord. If you, if you buy a car for $2,000 and sell it for $4,000, you have $2,000 to tithe on because you have, that's your increase. Does that make sense? It's whatever the increase is, whatever, uh, God gives you. Uh, you, 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 whatever God, increases you financially, God gets the first tenth. And you honor the Lord at that. And you say, God, I'm, I'm honoring you. This is yours. And, and, and it's, it's what we're supposed to do. Number Just number underneath that is, is God should be number one. It's the first fruit. 
It's the first thing to God. I want to read one more verse out of Matthew 5. I quoted Matthew 6, 33, but I want to read one more verse there. And uh, just to, to establish that, that God's number one. He's not an afterword if you have time. So let me get started on the time thing. So many people put God last in their finances. They also put God last in their time. If I have time, I'll read the Bible. If I have time, I'll go to church. That's putting God at the end. And, 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 and we, don't, we, we shouldn't do that. You make time for what's most important to you. And, uh, and, and so God should be first, Matthew 6 and uh, verse uh, <clears throat> um, 21 says this, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So it's a check. Also underneath that, it's, it's, it's not what, just what you give, but how you give. You should be glad to give cheerful, not grudgingly. It's, it's how you give. The widow, she just had a little bit, just the widow's mite. She, she just put a, she had her two mites, just pennies, and she put it in the offering, and Jesus said to everybody, see that widow there? She gave more than them all. It wasn't the amount, but she sacrificed out of love for God. And it wasn't the amount. And so don't ever feel guilty if you can't give a lot. You're required to give according to what you've been given. And if you have a million dollars, you're required to give more. If you have one dollar, <laughs> and by the way, I, I, yesterday I found a dollar. I, I was driving on the road. I saw it. I, 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 I don't miss a dollar bill, man. I saw it on the ground. I stopped my car in the parking lot over here. I backed up. I thought, was that a leaf or was that a dollar? I backed up. You saw it. Where's Ron? You saw that, didn't you? I almost got rear-ended. And... Uh, I got in my car, walked up there, and I had a dollar bill right there. And, uh, and so that's increase. I'll give God a dime out of that. And the rest will go to nothing anymore. And uh, I used to be able to buy something with it. Um, now I think I can buy a piece of bubble gum maybe. I don't know, maybe. And, uh, and so, um, but, uh, but that is, that's from God. And, and I want to show God I love him and put him first and, and in everything and to be cheerful about it. That every little bit, it just puts God first. It's, 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 not, it's not a matter of how much you give. It's a matter of being faithful with the tithe, loving God enough to give an offering, and giving it willingly, not grudgingly, not a necessity. God loves, what a phrase, God loves a cheerful giver. Guys, I just love them. They just love giving. And, and, and that's something God likes. And, and by the way, I don't think in most cases you should, your tithe is the Lord's. I mean, two things, tithe is God's, giving is, is willingly sacrificing. I don't think, I think you should always tithe because God commands you to, it's his, it's not yours. But the offering, the extra you give to God should be a love offering. What I mean by that is, I, I don't think you should give if you don't have it. I don't think you should give... If, you, if, you're, if you're not paying your bills, don't give an offering, just give the tithe. But I think if you have extra, you say, Lord, I love you this much. I don't have to do this, but I want to. It's willingly. Number two, everything we have is from the Lord anyway. <laughs> Let me think about our original passage. We're going we're gonna to be there, First Chronicles. Uh, First Chronicles 29. <clears throat> and uh, everything we have is from God. I'll illustrate this in, in such a clear way. If you're a parent, you'll understand it if you have more than one child, and, uh, and you'll understand it. But, but you know what David said here? He's praying and thanking God because he was so joyful that everybody gave. Just like I was joyful as you guys raised the money. We could have raised everything right there. And, and, and just the joy of seeing people who love giving and want to do it. It's a, it's a joy, and David is rejoicing and thanking God for the privilege of giving. And in verse 14, it, it, the words are so amazing in this verse. And he says, but who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? I, just for a moment there. He, he said, who am I and what is this nation that we can't even do this? And I want to say this. You live in America. You live in Seattle. We are blessed people. I, I have a video I'll show you probably next week from the Congo where I'll be going. And he goes to the village and he just shows the water they're pumping out of the well. It's not safe. We'll try to get some, uh, uh, some water filtration for the, for the people in that village. 
they can't get water filtration there. We can. We burn money, guys, because we're an American. We just, we do. We spend money on things that, and look, the first time I was in Mexico and I was preaching, the first time I was overseas, I was in Mexico, I preached in a church, and a couple other ladies came up to me after service, and they put money in my hand. And I, it was my first time, first time preaching, and they, they were crying, and they were saying something Spanish I would understand. They put money in my hand. And I went to the missionary afterward. I said, hey, they gave me this money. And they said, I cannot believe they gave you money. They're both widows, and they're very poor. And he went and talked to them, and they said, no, God spoke to us so much. I want to just say how much I appreciate him coming to our country and preaching to us. And I thought, I said, give them the money back. I don't need this. And they refused it. You flip that around, you come to America, and people are burning money with six bucks, co- six buck coffees, and they're putting three thousand dollar wheels on their cars, and burning money everywhere. You, we are accountable to help poor people because we have so much, and don't burn your money up like the average American does. You be wise with your money. I don't mind you spending something, you plan for it, and you budget for it. But, you know, David said, we are a blessed nation, and we can give this way. And, and, and look, you could live on beans and rice and cut out about $400 from your grocery budget if you wanted to, and, and eat fine. You could buy cheap stuff. You could do, and, and, and by the way, do you know that the healthier stuff is, you know, is better, better for you anyway? Buy some fruits. Buy some other things. And, and, and eating out. Eat out. Could just could. Stop eating out all the time. You're burning money. You don't have. And you could do so much with it. We're so blessed. And we ought to be givers. And, and we ought to thank God, Lord. Thank you. I have something to give. I was talking to a guy who was, who was in Nigeria as a missionary. And he was, in, he was right there on the border of the Muslim and the, and the and, I'm sorry. He was in Kenya, right on the border of uh, of uh, of the uh, uh, where the Muslims were. Really, were a lot of Muslims and Christians, and and he he had to be taken out at night multiple times to save his life. And he said, you know, he came to America. I met him in America. He was a he was a pastor in in Kenya, and he said, Pastor, I'm having a problem with this. He said, he said people would come to my church, and they would bring their carrots. And their and their beans and the things they grew, and they would say, Pastor, I wish I had more to give. I don't have. I I just eat my what I grow, and this is all I have. And they would they would go and give them a fish, and they give them some carrots, and and they'd be they, that's all they could do. And he said, I come here, and he says the people have money, and they are grumpy about giving, and they're not even sacrificing when they give, and they just doing it because they want another boat. Or a new car. And understand, David said, thank you, Lord, that we are in a position to give. And then he continues on. We're able to offer to so willingly after this sort. For all things come of thee. And of thine own have we given thee. He says, everything we have is from you. And it's your stuff we're giving you back to you. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variable to see your shadow of turning. Every good thing comes from God. Yeah. If you have the health to work and, and have a good job, the, the, uh, the country you live in, your intelligence you have, your skills you have, you, you were given an opportunity. You were given the basic working things. You might have taken advantage of that and worked hard and, and got your degree or, or took some chances and, and did good investing or whatever you did, but everything you had was an opportunity from the nation you live in, the health you got, the upbringing your parents might have given you, the air you're breathing is from God. It's like me to go into my kids and I'm I'm and I go and I say I, I get a box of drumsticks ice cream not drumsticks chicken drumsticks ice cream that's good stuff right there amen <laughs> and I get a box and I bring it home and I meet one of my kids at the door and I say I want you to go give every one of them and I give them the box I go I want you to go give everybody a drumstick and they open the box and I take one out and they say oh this is oh, this is good. And they make a detour to the room. I say, hey, where, where are you going? 
You gave him to me. Whoa, 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 whoa. I handed him to you so you can give him to them. There's more drums. There's, there's a drumstick for you, and there's enough for them, too. I don't want to give it. I don't want to give it. It's mine. It's mine. And that's the way it is. With, And by the way, you know what I do? I take the drumsticks myself. And I distribute them. And the distributor gets the first one. I'll take the one from the kid who won't give it to other people. And eat it. Along with my other one. In front of them. In love. And, uh, and I, I will... Why? Because I gave it to them for others, but they got selfish. And God blesses us. And he doesn't want us to be selfish. Everything we have is from him anyway. I'm going to read uh, just, there's so many passages on this. And you might want to jot down, I'm going to turn there, but Genesis 28, 22. Abraham knew everything. And the people, the, the, the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they knew everything that God was from God. But I'm going to read out of Psalms. And they said, this is a gift, God. You gave it to me anyway. I'm just giving it back to you. Psalm chapter 50 says this. Let me read a couple verses here. It's all from God. In verse 10, it says this, For every beast of the field is mine, and the cattle of a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the, uh, <clears throat> on the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the world is mine and the fullness thereof. God says, I, everything's mine. Everything's mine. And look, I'll make a deal with you guys. Here, here. So <clears throat> let's say I just went up to you and I gave you $1,000. And I said, okay, I want you to give me some of that back to me. You're not being that generous. Right? <laughs> You're like, okay, here, here's a hundred bucks. And be thankful. I'm like, I'm not thankful. I give you a thousand. <laughs> and God lets us keep and blesses us, but everything you have is from God. You're not you're breathing right now, your heart is beating because God. He made you, He lets you live, He provides your needs, and every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights. It's it's only God. And he is the only way. And, and we've got to realize that without God, we have nothing. And so it's all about God. And everything we have is from God. Don't get selfish with what God has given you. Number three, what can we give to the Lord? It's just a little list here. Number one, you already mentioned our finances. But let me just kick it Romans 12. There's more that you can give to God than your money. And, and, and that was just the thing that they were talking about in, in, in Chronicles. But Romans <clears throat> and chapter um, 12, verse 1 and 2. It says this, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know what you can give to God? You know, not, forget about money or anything. I, you know what's funny? You got that dollar right there I found. There's my dollar. And, uh, and, uh, and so, uh, but you know what you can give to God? You can give God yourself. Present your body living sacrifice. You know, when I got that, when I was a teenager, and I just at some point just said, God, I'm yours, whatever you want to do with my life, I just gave myself to God. That's, an, that's a gift of giving. And you can give yourself to God. Give your will to God. Not my will, but thy will be done. Give your own selves to God. I'm going to read you uh, <clears throat> uh, in that same passage that we, we quoted from earlier, but it's, it talks about uh, giving yourself. 2 Corinthians 8, verses 2 through 5. Listen to this passage. Now that in a great, how that in a great trial of affliction, uh, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded under the riches of their liberality. Talking about the church at Philippi and how giving they were, even though they were poor. For to their power, I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, their willing of themselves, uh, praying us with all, with much entreaty that we would receive the gift, uh, <clears throat> 
and uh, take upon us the fellowship of the ministering of the saint. And this they did not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Give yourself to God. Give your life to God. Whatever's left of it, whatever your skills are, whatever your talents are, give it to God. If you're intelligent, if you're good at money, if you're good at people, if you are have influence, if people follow you, if you are a, a good cleaner, whatever it is, give it to God and give your whole life to God. Don't let your life be yours. Let God have your life. And he might call you to anything and he might lead you in a way you don't expect. But let me tell you, the plan of God is good. And you don't just have to give money. You can give yourself to God. Next, give a sacrifice of praise. Here's our memory verse today. You don't have to just give money or give yourself. You can give a sacrifice to God that he'll like, and it's praise. Giving God glory and thanks. Hebrews 13, 15 says this. It says, uh, for um, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is a fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto God. You know what it is? Uh, sacrifice is, you give to God, is just saying, Lord, I right now praise you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my family. Thank you for life. Thank you for the food I have today. Thank you, Lord, I give you praise. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for being my father. Thank you for your patience. I just lift up a gift to you right now, and it's just a sacrifice of praise. That takes time, it takes effort, and it pleases God. We are not very good praisers. You probably told God everything you're grumpy about. And that's okay. I'm not against that. That's fine. But can you offer up? It doesn't cost anything. You don't say, you might give your life to God, and God might send you to be a missionary to, you know, Indonesia. But a sacrifice of praise is just, Lord, I love you. Thank you. Lord, look at this food I have. I have more than I can eat. Thank you for this coffee, Lord. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my vehicle. It's too bad you don't thank God for your vehicle until your vehicle breaks down. You complain about your vehicle, and then you don't have a vehicle, and you're like, yeah, I'd take that old junker right now. Hey, look, all you have to do is not have a car, and you will rejoice in a point A to point B car. (laughs) Just let it get me there. And, 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 and I don't even care if it, look, after a while, once you're content, you learn to be a content person, you'll thank God for your clunker. It might not look good. It might not have heated seats. Well, they're heated when the sun shines in it. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and you might not have all the options, might not even have air conditioning or cruise control. I mean, you kids don't even know. You drive these nice cars nowadays. You never had to use a choke. You know, you never had, You don't know cars with personality. You don't know. Right. You think your car's a junker because, you know, it doesn't got w- nice wheels. Man, you, you, if, you, if, you, if you've never had to have the hood open while you start it, you don't know how good you have it. And, uh, and, <clears throat> and, and be thankful and thank God for that. You can offer up a sacrifice of praise. You can offer up your family to God. 1 Samuel 1.28, uh, uh, Hannah said, this says that she has lent her son to the Lord. And you can give God your children. You can give God your marriage and say, Lord, they're all yours. Our family belongs to you. And you give it to God. What else can you give to God? Give God glory. Psalm 29, 2. Give unto the Lord glory do his name. Give him credit for what he did. That you're alive today. How many of you should not be alive today? Okay, give God the glory that he kept you alive. Amen. Amen. Give God the glory for, for, for saving you, for lifting you up from your sin, for getting, giving you deliverance. And let me say, give, you can also give God love. Yeah, money's fine, and yes, you know, your life is good, and praise is good. But you know, if you just, 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. If you just love the Lord and say, Lord, I'm giving you my love. I don't have a lot to give you, but I'm a loving person, and I love you with all my heart. God will be very pleased with your sacrifice because you gave him your love. 
I want to say, when you fall in love with God and give me your love, the service of God does not become grievous. Oh, do I have to go to church? Oh, do I have to pray? Oh, do I have to give? Oh, do I have to be nice to that person? Oh, do I have to be kind? You just, all of a sudden, you love the Lord so much, you're glad to serve Him. You're no longer handing your spouse the flowers saying, you know how much these roses cost? You're not doing that to God anymore. You're saying, Lord, I gladly give this to you. Lord, I'm glad to sweep the church. I love you. Thank you for letting me do that. Your whole attitude changes when you fall in love with God. Last thing I want to say, and I think we'll finish up in pretty good time today, considering all we had to do, is take the gift that God has given you. God has given you a gift, and he wants you to take it. He has a gift for you. It was before you gave him anything. It says this, and this is the record that God hath given unto us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have been written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. The Bible says a gift of God is eternal life. You can give God a gift, but God's given you a gift. Jesus paid the price on the cross, dying for you. And that gift is living forever in heaven. It's a gift. You can't pay for it. It's not something you can earn. It's a gift. God gives you eternal life, not by being good, not by religion, not by church. It is the gift of God. You never pay anything for a gift. Don't believe the dumb things on TV or the radio where they say, if you buy this for $19.95, we'll give you a free gift. You understand that's not a free gift. Okay? And God gives you a free gift. You don't earn it. You receive it. Thank you. And that gift is eternal life. Jesus paid the price on the cross when he died for your sins. That's the only way to heaven, through Jesus. Your sins separate you from God, but the gift of God is eternal life. You've got to receive that gift. You've got to receive that gift. I hope you receive it today. God's got a gift for you. Now, we want to give gifts to him. Praise the Lord. Give willingly. But God gave himself willingly. I'm going to read the last verses. I'll read Jesus' words here about his gift, about him giving willingly. Because, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, they didn't kill him. He gave his life. He could have come off the cross. He could have destroyed the whole world. He gave himself. He says this in John 7, uh, 10, 17, and 18. Therefore... Um, doth my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received to my father. He says, nobody's taken my life. I am giving it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Receive God's gift to you, eternal life. Don't miss heaven because you won't receive the gift or because you think you can save yourself. Receive that gift and then give willingly back to God after you do that. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the chance to preach today your word. I pray today that as we saw those verses over and over, they gave themselves willingly. They gave willingly. He gave willingly. Lord, as we see this over and over, may we give willingly, not a necessity. And may we receive that gift of eternal life that you gave us willingly. Thank you for a love relationship that gives willingly. Giving thanks, giving financial, give, giving praise. Lord, I pray that we would give our lives to you. I pray if somebody's not saved, they would be saved today.